In simple terms, I translate sustainability into action. So I work for companies or I've worked for governments, I work for NGOs to try to make the world more sustainable, particularly looking at environmental and social outcomes. So working at Thai Union was one of those dream jobs. I joined it when there was really a crisis. Um, there was a lot of focus on Thailand for slavery at sea, uh, ocean sustainability, and I was given this role where reporting to the CEO, I had essentially a blank card to work out what is the strategy to take this giant seafood company, one of the largest in the world, from where they currently were, which was in a difficult situation, to one of the leading players in the space. And it's not often you get that opportunity, but I had it. And through working with a great team and collaborating across the world, we could really make changes, both for ocean sustainability and particularly looking at fisheries, but also for people working in our own operations and supply chains around the world. Funny, I just discussed this with one of my team members at Thai Union, that when I started studying and I did environmental engineering, and we were the first intake at the University of New South Wales for environmental engineers, and nobody knew what we were going to do. There was probably a suspicion that we might work for governments. I think my parents thought I was doing something like joining the circus. It's like, what does an environmental engineer do? And now, Sadly, over 20 years later, I find I'm in an industry and a career which is hugely desirable, very popular. A lot of people are looking for ESG or environmental social governance experts and sustainability. And it's like having the light shone on you after 20 years in the darkness. So who knew where I was going to be when I started out, but it's been an incredibly fun journey to get here. So I have mentioned that I trained as an engineer and I think engineers are solution providers and I really do look around at all of the challenges that we see at the moment and sometimes it's overwhelming whether you're looking at climate change or inequalities or ocean health but I immediately start to think about well we could do this or this could be another solution and if it can only connect with that person maybe together that we could go somewhere and so I do always look at it from a problem and a solution perspective and I think it's always having the solutions in mind that gives me optimism that yes there's something we can do and there's something we can change so as many as the problems keep coming up and they do seem overwhelming I also see a lot of great opportunities and there's so many people who are engaged in the topic of sustainability now that you can have a conversation literally with anybody and they will have some perspectives on what the solutions could be. I think you need to follow your passion, whether it's in sustainability or whatever you do, because that's what's going to take you further. It's going to help you go deeper into different areas and I think will ultimately drive success. So I wouldn't get into sustainability just because it's trendy. I would go and do something that you genuinely feel passionate about um, and it helps really blur that line between I guess work and the rest of your life because if you're doing something that you love every day for work it just makes it that much easier and you have so much more interest and dedication to what you're doing. There's a lot happening in finance and I think finance and accounting previously hadn't been very closely aligned with sustainability, but of course money makes the world go around. Uh, I previously got into purchasing and supply chain because the way we buy things makes such a big difference for sustainability. But now I think I would have a little bit more focus on how the money works, how are projects being funded, how can we support more sustainable solutions? And I think that's an interesting area for someone who is starting out to look at, as well as having a fundamental understanding of the science behind a lot of these sustainability issues that we're talking about. That's probably the next thing I'd say, be prepared for the media. Uh, 
It's been a journey in itself. Whoever knew an engineer could speak. So I'd say when I was working with WWF, I had to get much more social media savvy because I was working on palm oil and that really is a social media friendly topic. So I started writing blogs and getting into Twitter. Not that I'm hugely into that, but it was more, that was the platform to communicate. And then with Thai Union, I really became their spokesperson because the most vocal topics were around sustainability. And my first media training with them was with an ex-BBC journalist in the UK. And it was rapid fire questions about how could you have people in modern slavery? How could you have done this? Why haven't you done that? And that was just quite an eye opener of you need to be able to express yourself clearly and succinctly if you're going to start to win some of these battles and sustainability communications is absolutely vital. You can do all of the good work in the world, but if you can't communicate it, then you're going to be losing the battle. And I think another conversation I had at The Guardian, I was invited to a panel and I loved The Guardian and I was in London. I can remember messaging my sister going, oh, I'm going to The Guardian. They hated me for being big business, big seafood. If they could have thrown tomatoes at me, they would have absolutely hated me. And you know, I think that's another aspect to get to know. Not everybody will like you for what you're doing, but you have to have that conviction that you're doing the right thing. Oh my God, now that is totally unexpected. I looked at the other people you're promoting, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to win, but I've got to show up. Oh wow, thank you, that is amazing news and completely unexpected. Thank you so much.